Hey viewers, after a bit of a hiatus, welcome back to another Dr. Spotfire quick tip. Today I'm going to talk about column matches and data relationships. Now these are two topics, could be two videos, but they're very related and there's a lot of nuance between them. So I'm going to do it in one video. It might be a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it to show this all at once. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Here I'm looking at real-time data at production surveillance on oil wells in the South Texas region. And this is looking at surveillance of submersible pump equipment. So to look at data relations and column matches, you can go into the data table properties and you'll see the relations tab and column matches tab. Now these require you to have a column that you can unify your different tables on. The relations are created manually. You have to create these by yourself. Column matches are created automatically when Spotfire detects columns that have the same name. If you have columns that have different names but you want to unify on that, then you can manually create a column match. So the relations actually propagate markings and filters across tables that are separate tables, whereas the column matches are between different tables, but they allow you to visualize the two different tables or multiple tables in one visualization. This type of arrangement of my data structure is useful for normalizing my data tables, which is a way to reduce redundancy between the data tables and increase the data integrity. Uh, and so what I mean by that, let me go ahead and show you so here, let me go ahead, I'm going to go to this production history table. And let's say this production history is just showing well ID, production date, the months, producing hours, uh, producing barrel amount. And if I wanted to add columns from another table, here I'll add my master index table. And Spotfire is automatically recognizing that well ID is in both tables and saying, hey, I think you should match on this. And you'll see that you know it's adding new columns here on the right. You can see this in this medium blue color. But what this is doing is actually duplicating a lot of data because there's multiple wells across different time here uh, or you know you have one well here across all these time values and it's now duplicating this data these attributes across here so this can blow up the size of your dashboard it, you can imagine if you have even more columns that you're joining this way this can make really large tables and you might want that but it's more efficient if you can find a way to relate them and match them so that's what we're going to show today so here I have the four tables in the analysis and you can see my master index is a unique record for each of my wells with their latitude and longitude, the region, the type of well it is. So this is a unique row for each well. Uh, the production history is a time series values. And then you have sensor data, which is real time data. And this is only showing for those well IDs, uh, some of the uh, sensor measurements coming off those wells. Now, if I mark some of this data, you'll see that it's marking it across all of the tables because they're related together. So this allows me to treat uh, the select and the markings uniformly across a page across different tables uh, and it's more efficient that way than again joining them all together it's really important again with the sensor data which is streaming and I want to use as few columns as possible I don't want to keep sending in columns that have the same type of repeating information on the location and so I just want the unique data that's coming in which is the sensor readings and then the well ID to tie that to so let's take a look at how I use this in a visualization so here on the map, you can see the individual well that's, you know, having an increasing value. It's starting to set off an alarm. Um, and if I go into what I'm looking at with this layer is it's based off of my master index table. But if I go to colors here, uh, this is used with a match column. So this is not using the master index table. You'll see this drop down, uh, which has the other tables that have column matches in it. And so I want to show the sensor data here. And with any column match, you have to use an aggregation. So I'm using last value here, which is the last value that's being sent by my streaming source. So if I went ahead and I took out the column match, let's go to um, my data table properties, let's go to sensor data, let's go to column matches, and I took out this, this match, what you're going to see is now all of the wells are being shown. There's more wells shown. There's wells that don't have any data streaming on them, but they were in my master well index. Now all the wells are showing and you're going to see that they're all changing uh, with the latest value that's coming in. And, that, and so it's not showing by the individual well because there's no match going between the sensor data to the index to tell it, hey, at this location, it's only this well ID sensor. It's sending any of the last sensor data across to the whole table. So it's not working well for me that way. 
So if I go ahead and I, I create a new match here, uh, I have my sensor data table, and I'm going to say well ID in my right matching column, I have well ID. You also have these transformations, like if you have strings, you can choose to trim the string to get rid of white space. You can convert them all to uppercase or lowercase to make sure that the matches are exact, uh, regardless of the case of the letters, uh, things like that. So you can use those transformations. I know my well IDs are all clean data. Um, and I don't need to do any transformation. So I just added that column match back in and you can see that now it's back to uh, showing individual wells. Now again, relations are used to propagate markings and filters across tables, but they're not used for putting multiple tables in one visualization. Now you can use such a relation to relate to the same table. Let's say you have one table that's pivoted and the other one that's unpivoted in a different structure. Uh, you need that for different visualizations, uh, but you want them to interact cohesively. You can use a relation for that. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, interesting drill downs and some tips with markings and drill downs. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, here I'm looking at opioid prescription rates for different counties in Texas. And you'll see that right here on the map. Uh, I also have this date slider so I can change the date and you'll see all the data changing. So this is essentially all filtered from a property control just to show a certain date. If I select a trend here in the trend, you can see the trends of the different counties over time. This little table is just showing a, a detail of what rows I'm selecting. However, if I select the single row here, if I select Brown County, this is only for 2016 right now, and you're only seeing one data point here. So that's not very useful for me. How do I get this to allow me to drill down into the whole trend? So a little trick here is you can use, um, you can go ahead and add data, uh, and you can add the same table back to the analysis. So the opioid prescribing rate, I'm gonna add it again. This has opioid prescribing rate two. I'm gonna hit okay. This go ahead, goes ahead and adds this. So this is now linked to the same table. Same table's in here twice, but they're linked. If I go to data relations, I go to data table, I go to relations, this doesn't have a match or a relation between the tables. So I can go ahead and create a relation between prescribing rate two and the original prescribing rate table. Now, a unique identifier I have for counties is FIPS code. So I can go ahead and create that. But if I wanted to do it, let's say I did it by state here and I did it by state on the other one. So prescribing rate here and I did state. What this means, if I only had the state match in, that means if I selected anything in Texas and any county, it's gonna to match to all the other rows that have Texas and it's gonna show every county. So I can use multiple columns here to uniquely uh, designate which rows that I want selected. So um, I have FIPS code that's a unique county identifier. I could use just that, or I could use a combination of state and county. So I already have a state column, I'm gonna do county. Uh, and now this has a county name. Uh, the reason you can't just do the county name is you could have a brown county in Michigan or California or other states. So you need both columns here to uniquely identify that. So now that I have both of those, now that I have those both those tables and those relations, let me go ahead and switch this to prescribing rate two. And you'll see that when I select brown county, it now has the entire trend. So it's showing everything that is brown county in Texas from one table is matching to all the time series data in the other table. You'll see here, this is only showing the one row because this is my original table. But if I change this to prescribing rate two, now you're gonna see that it's showing every year in Brown County. And that's what I'm showing with the second table. Another quick little tip here, a little nuance, is if you're gonna try to propagate uh, filters through relations, use this little uh, icon here with these two tables and you can choose the way that you want your filters to propagate between tables. Now you might ask, what's the point of column matches then? If I can just relate these two together, then in two different tables, why do I need column matches? Well, again, remember, column matches allow you to use two different tables or multiple tables in the same visualization. They also allow you to match different columns uh, from one table to a single column of another table. So let me show you an example of this nuance. Here I have an employee directory table, which is a unique row for each employee. This is some synthetic data I created uh, with just some unique um, you know, email addresses, employee names, and this is kind of like my master index. So this is my employee directory. I also have email history here, which is showing a sender and a receiver. So who is the sending um, uh, employee and who is the receiving one, what time was it sent, how many characters were in the email. And so here you could have 
you know, one person sending to uh, five other people, right? And so this is not necessarily, each of these columns are not unique in, in the sense that there could be repeated values in each of these columns. So here I'm trying to visualize this. I'm looking at the employee directory data. And in this employee directory data, I wanna see for each of my employees, my unique employees, how many are they sending? How many are they receiving? So I'm gonna go into my data here. I'm gonna set up a column match and I'm gonna add a match. And here I have the email history and the employee directory, they're my only two tables in the, in the data set. So the email from the directory, I wanna put this on the sender, okay? So now, now this is gonna match with the sender email address. The two email addresses match. I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna hit close. So now this is how many emails, uh, again, actually, let me show you here. This is the sender. I put the sender in the y-axis, and I have to use an aggregation, I have to use a count. So how many emails did each of these employees send? Now, if I wanna see the receiver, I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm going to go into data and column matches, and I'm going to create a new match here. So I'm gonna use email again. I use email in the other match, but I'm gonna use email again, and this time I'm gonna to go to receiver, and I'm gonna hit okay, and so now I have email from one column of one table going to different columns of another table. And I'll hit OK. And so now I have a choice to select a match. The other one is right now it's set to sender. These two bar charts are identical. But I can change it to receiver. And you can look very carefully. You can pause the video if you need to. But you can see that these are actually different, uh, different rows here. So I can change this to, to receiver and, and count. These are, are different patterns here. So I have one table, one visualization now for receiver per email, another one for sender per email. Thank you all for checking out this video. Make sure that you subscribe if you found it helpful. We'll be back with more tips for you. Thanks.